Hello there, this is Review88 here with another movie review. Today's movie review is going to be about four movies. Um, these are the four slasher films I own on DVD. Um, and I've seen all four of these, but uh, some of them I don't exactly remember too well. Other ones I kind of do. Um, so, but I'll be watching some of these again, that's why I'll probably remember a lot more, but I kind of know the basic storyline for a lot of these, for these films. Um, the two, the four films, three of them are actually on regular DVD, one of them's on Blu-ray. Um, the reason why I got these on DVD, three of these, first thing, one of them was sold for about $3 at a, uh, thrift shop, I think. Um, turned out that the t the DVD was used and had a bunch of fingerprints on it and kind of meh, messed up and, um, meh. <laughs> Sorry, I accidentally did that. Um, anyway, and two of them I bought, uh, at, uh, the, this, uh, Barnes & Noble, which had a bunch of CDs and DVDs in it. So we went to that one, um, I bought two of those. Uh, I couldn't exactly really find the Blu-ray versions of these DVDs, and especially the Blu-ray versions might have been over how much I was given. Um, so they're about forty dollars or something like that. At this store, um, they would have been like sixty or something like that. It was like twenty percent off or something like that. So I don't know. Um, either that or it's twenty percent off of forty. So I don't know. Um, and then one of them I actually bought for about $10 at uh, Best Buy, so uh, that was the Blu-ray version. Um, four films, I'll stop right over here and show you, since I've been walking around a lot lately. Um, four films, Halloween 2, the uh, 1981 edition, Freddy vs. Jason, the uh, Rob Zombie Halloween movie, the unrated director's cut, and then the Friday 13th remake, 2009 remake. Um, I already reviewed the 2009 Freddy, uh, Friday 13th remake, but I'll just talk about it um, in this review while I talk about the others. So we're going to start off with Halloween 2. This was the sequel to the uh, first Halloween film, which came out in 1978. This film came out in 1981. Um, it was... Really, you kind of feel like Michael Myers at the end of this film. He basically, if I could do this, dies. Um, just say that's quotation marks. But um, he doesn't, like, spoiler alert, but he doesn't really, uh, you know, come back to life until the fourth film. The third film wasn't even based, like, um, after this film. It's just another type of Halloween film, I guess. Um, it was just really supposed to be based around the... Uh, the um day halloween the holiday halloween and it was just a different creepier story a different story line and wasn't based after halloween 2 and before halloween 4 um so it's not part of the actual storyline of the series um anyway um this film uh like i said continuation of the first film i like the first film and this film i was a little bit disappointed when i realized when i watched halloween for the first time i was a little bit disappointed that Michael Myers, you don't exactly really get to see him exactly, like, everything about him until the end of the film. Um, but, I mean, I guess that kept the, sus kept the suspense. And the oddest thing is I didn't think... When I was watching it for the second time, I didn't remember how long it was. Um, and I was watching it on my iPad, so I thought they didn't really complete the movie. Just had, like, an hour, 45 minutes of it, and wasn't the exact whole film, I thought. But it turned out to be the whole film. Like, oh yeah, that, I remember that now. Um, Halloween 2 uh, really is based after when uh, Michael Myers, when uh, Dr. Loomis goes out to find Michael Myers' dead body and he's gone. Um, and goes back to Lori, um, Jamie Lee Curtis's character, uh, if I can remember what her name is. Lori is her name, I think it is. Lori Myers. 
Um, yeah, I think it's Lori. I don't exactly remember, but I think it's Lori. Um, so, she's basically in a hospital for most of the film, and Michael Myers is haunt, like hunting down her and killing people in the hospital. And then, spoiler alert, um, he gets set on fire at the end of the film, and that's how really he dies. Um, but it's, it's another really good film. I really like this. Like I said, it's probably, should I say, my second favorite Halloween film um, from the series. Not like just a regular Halloween film. I'm talking about the series. But I'm a really big fan of Michael Myers right now. I don't know. I think he might be my favorite. And then maybe Freddy's my second. I don't know. Um, but I'm a huge fan of slasher films, as you can tell right now. I'm obsessed with them. And that's why I've been trying to buy these DVDs. Uh, even if they're not Blu-ray, I'm fine with that. Um, not a huge fan of Blu-ray, but I get Blu-ray anyway. Um, so yeah. Um, ow. It's kind of the back of the film. DVD. So yeah, it really kind of picks up after the, uh, precisely after the uh, first film. I also kind of like how in the poster, it's basically almost the same thing as the first movie for the poster, except the pumpkin is complete, like it's a full pumpkin, has no knife, and instead the face, instead of just having a regular creepy pumpkin face, it has a skull as the face, and it looks like a 3D skull, so, and there's nothing to do with Michael Myers on the poster, except the more of, more than that he came home, and then... But everything else is really just about the movie, not so much of Michael Myers on the poster. So that was Halloween 2, the 1981 version. Um, Michael Myers is actually played by a different actor in this film. I thought he was played by the same guy, because really he kind of looks the s same as in the first film. But um, by the fourth film, he starts changing a little bit. And then the fifth film has this really weird mask. And then the sixth film kind of goes a little bit back to his rally... Uh, Riley, um, back to his, uh, you know, earlier type of look. So, yeah. Next, we have Freddy vs. Jason. Um, came out in 2003. As you know, if you don't know this, Freddy, uh, Freddy Krueger was the uh, slasher in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street series, and then Jason was the slasher in the Friday 13th series, except number one. Um, his mother was the killer in number one. And then she got, spoiler, she got her head chopped off at the end of the film. And then Jason was watching, apparently, and just got pissed off by that and started killing people. That's how he became the killer. But after that, he just never would stop killing. Um, got obsessed with it. Uh, Freddy was always kind of obsessed with killing kids ever since uh, he got bullied by kids. So really, he would just kill them. And yeah, and then he got his dream powers after he got set on fire. Um, Freddy vs. Jason was the ultimate film, really. Kind of a bunch of people wanted it, um, but it came. It was a precise good moment, a good uh, century for the this movie to come out. But I felt like this is when Freddy and Jason kind of already like by this time they already kind of mostly died out from the uh, the thing. I mean, I guess they brought this film brought them back, but they kind of died out, you know, for a while. So I guess it could have been interesting if they made it in like the late early '90s, like late '80s, early '90s. That would have been cool, but um, it kind of would have been also weird because a lot of people say it was kind of nine late ni the 1990s was kind of a bad time to make Freddy vs. Jason. I don't exactly know why, but I just heard that from a book. I was reading about the making of the Friday the 13th series. Um, so the story is really kind of complex in its own thing. Um, there, there was a bunch of, you know, scripts that they went through for this film. And um, there's this crappy script that I remember that was uh, basically Freddy and Jason were um, demons sent from Satan to kill people. And I didn't exactly understand if that, if they used that, why would Freddy and Jason be fighting each other? I felt like they would be teamed up or something like that and working with each other, but I guess maybe they might have had rival ships before and 
hated each other and just decided to kill that and kill people and each other. Um, but the one that they eventually used was really Freddy was forgotten by uh, the Elm Street and the Springwood people. So they erased him, erased his name from every single thing that he showed up in. Um, they would block him out from newspapers and like highlight his like you know sharpie over his name and stuff like that. And so really he was forgotten about and. Basically, he can't use his powers. He tried it on one person, and then uh, his powers didn't work. Um, the guy just got away. Uh, so he calls on Jason through a dream as his mother, you know, disguises himself as Mrs. Voorhees, and um, tells him that he should go and kill some people from at uh, Elm Street. And that was Freddy's plan to get him get Freddy's name back in there so people can get scared of him. Um, again, mm, so he can get his powers back, and it doesn't quite, well, it works for a little bit, and then Jason starts killing way more people before he gets pissed off, so they have an ultimate showdown at the end, spoiler alert, uh, the girl, the, one of the, there's a bunch of teenagers in the middle of this conflict, so the girl, like the main girl, main character, um, she chops Freddy's head off when he's not in the dream world. Um, and then his head falls into the water. Jason was already thrown in the water. And then later on, it shows Jason coming out of the water with Freddy's head, and then Freddy winks at the camera, and then it's the end of the film. Um, so yeah, I, I liked the film when I first watched it. Um, I liked it a little bit more when I, the second time I watched it. I'm kind of interested in watching it a third time, but, you know, I can't exactly because the DVD quality kind of sucks because the, um, guy kept, this, the person kept touching it. And it was a used DVD. Oh, excuse me, sorry. A bunch of people called me a bunch of times. And it interrupts. I don't want to answer that. It's Bank of America. My parents can just call them back. Um, yeah, so, Freddy vs. Jason was pretty cool. Um, they brought back Robert Englund as Freddy, but they did not bring back Ken Hodder's Jason. I don't exactly know the reason why. I don't think they really exactly completely explained that. But um, they brought Ken Kurzinger, who was a good Jason. He was taller than Freddy, so I guess that could have been a little bit of a match. A um, little bit of a match for Freddy. But, um, yeah. I don't know why. I kind of like Freddy a little bit better than Jason, but I'm obsessed with the Uber Jason that... Uh, you see in uh, Jason X. Um, just obsessed with that one. And I'm kind of obsessed with the first four Freddy, uh, Friday the 13th films. Um, I don't know why either. But yeah, so that was Freddy vs. Jason. Um, moving on to Halloween. This is the Rob Zombie film. If you never know who Rob Zombie is, he was uh, he's kind of a movie director nowadays. But back then, when he was in his 90s, he was in kind of a new like alternative metal band called the White Zombie called White Zombie, and then they broke up, so he went into a solo act, like an alternative metal, new metal type of band, uh, solo act, and yeah, and then he directed this film, and he directed the sequel as well. This film was actually a very depressing film. I kind of like it. Um, I think it's better than the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, definitely, but um, it's depressing, not a lot of happiness in it, really, actually no happiness at all, just a bunch of killing and sad parts, and kind of feel sad for Michael. I did, at least, but, you know, I always kind of felt sad for Michael. I always felt sad for all of them, but, you know, they choose their own paths. Um, really, the thing is, is the whole story begins when it kind of talks about Michael's childhood. I think where does it start off, I don't exactly remember, but I remember there's one part when they talk about Michael's childhood, when he, uh, killed his best friend or something like that, and killed killed someone, like, a classmate of his, and then he killed his sister, and I think he was, like, six years old when he did that, and then he was put into a psycho place, and then he escaped, and then became Michael Myers and hunted down his sister and stuff like that. And yeah. Um, so, it's really... Michael, the Rob Zombie films, the Rob Zombie Halloween films are definitely really dark, and... Depressing. Yeah. 
This is the unrated version, so basically there's gonna be a lot of nudity and blood and shit, and yeah, it's gonna be like fucking crazy. I don't swear that much in videos, at least, but you know, I kind of feel like it's a Halloween film. It's a horror slasher film. People swear in slasher films, so I just felt like you know I should. Um, so yeah, it doesn't tell you why it's not rated. It just says not rated. Right there. Um, yeah. Let's see, pictures in the back. So I got this. I got this DVD the same time as I got the Halloween two. Um, and then we got. So that's the end of that. And then we got for, uh, the Friday Thirteenth, which I already told you about on the last review. Um, so overall, I think these are pretty good Halloween films. Uh, not Halloween films, horror films. Um. The originals are always better, and sometimes the sequels might be good as well. A lot of people say the Friday the 13th sequels were crap. Um, I agree in some parts. There are definitely crappy Friday the 13th sequels. For instance, um, Jason X, that was a very crappy one, but uh, the Uber Jason was pretty cool. Jason Goes to Hell was a bad storyline, but I thought Jason was cool in that film. I wish he was in the film more than he was, but he wasn't exactly. He just was in the film for about 20 minutes and then got killed off. And But he possessed a bunch of people. It was odd. And really, it wasn't Jason going to hell. He did, but then it was like an odd twist to the film. Um, anyway, uh, so this is my last review. I might do one tomorrow. Um, tomorrow night I'm leaving, and I won't be back until the 24th. So tomorrow's the 14th, so I'll be gone for about 10 days. Um, I can do reviews, and I can post stuff on Facebook and all that, because they allow me to. Um, it's a Boy Scout camp, and I don't really like Boy Scouts, but, um, uh, my other Boy Scout camp I used to go to during the summer, they don't allow you to use your phones. Um, but this camp does, which is a good thing, because you can't always get away from your phones. It's always boring if you do. Um, usually it is. But, anyway. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully I might do a review tomorrow. I don't exactly know. I might talk about the Halloween 2 film, because I might be watching that tonight or later on today, I don't exactly know. My mom said that's fine as long as I don't watch the uh, unrated version for a while. Um, I guess I might just watch the unrated version when my parent, when my mom's gone, but um, she's fine if I watch the uh, rated R versions of the film. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, hopefully you have a good day. Um, it's beautiful outside. It's really hot, but um, very hot. It's very hot. Um, but yeah, so... Hopefully, I see you later on. Um, my my reviews have become longer now, uh, just because I like talking a lot. So my rev reviews are longer, and I like making longer reviews because then I get to talk more. And the shorter reviews, I only do that if I don't have as enough much time or if I'm kind of embarrassed to do a review. Just want to get it out, you know, get a review out. Anyway, um, yeah, just buy these films, watch them, have a good time. All right, guys, bye. See you later.